Inside Piedmont Community Church Chapel, there's a stained glass window featuring the likeness of Johann Sebastian Bach, one of the greatest musicians the world has ever known. Next to this window is another of Dr. Albert Schweitzer, one of the world's greatest humanitarians. Schweitzer was inspired by Bach, which is why these two windows sit side by side. More on that in a minute. I've been pretty obsessed with Albert Schweitzer for years, and he's been a major inspiration in my life. I have a few photographs of Schweitzer in my church office, and this wonderful bust, a gift from my friend and mentor, Dr. Richard Wing. These images remind me of Schweitzer's work and the influence he's had on me and my ministry at Piedmont Church. He helped me to see that the Christian faith is not so much about what you believe, your theological or philosophical views, as it is about what you do. The Christian life is built on a life of service to others. That's why I started taking students to build houses in Mexico in 1982 as a youth minister, and then began my work in Kenya and Malawi, supporting our mission hospitals. That's why I wanted a sister church like Imani and Kafita. Schweitzer was born in 1875 in the village of Kaiserberg in the Alsace region of France. His father was a minister of the Lutheran Church. He fell in love with music, particularly the organ, and after studying at the university, became one of the world's greatest organists and an expert on the music of Bach. He gave up that illustrious career because he felt called by God to enter the ministry. He got his degrees and became a pastor in the Lutheran Church and later a professor of divinity at the seminary in Strasbourg. He was a successful pastor and professor and authored several influential books on theology. But one day in 1905, at the age of 30, something happened that turned his life upside down. He opened a magazine and saw photos of desperately poor Africans with diseases and injuries. They were alongside an advertisement from the Paris Missionary Society announcing the need for a doctor to come and to work in what is now the country of Gabon in West Africa. As he looked at the ad, he felt God was calling him to go and help. So he put aside his degrees in music and theology and spent six years in medical school and residency to be trained as a doctor. Now armed with a medical degree, Schweitzer went at his own expense with his wife to serve at the Paris Missionary Society's clinic at Lamborghini. In the first few months, he and his wife, Helene, who functioned as a nurse, had 2,000 patients to examine. Some traveled many days and hundreds of miles to reach him, the only doctor in that part of the country. Schweitzer wrote appeals letters to churches in Europe, and he was able to raise enough money to build a small bush hospital. Over the years, his fame spread. A larger hospital was built, and other doctors came to join in the work. The media was fascinated by this French doctor with his bushy mustache, white clothes, and bush helmet. He landed on the cover of Time and Life magazines, becoming the most famous humanitarian in the world. He teamed up with Albert Einstein to lobby President Kennedy against nuclear testing and in favor of a ban on nuclear weapons. In 1952, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Late in his career, his fame caused too many people to want to come and serve with him at Lamborghini. He would gently encourage them to find their own Lamborghini. This call to service is captured in a short speech he made to a boys' school on one of his return trips to Europe. He said to the students, I do not know what your destiny may be, but of one thing I am certain, the only ones of you who will ever be happy are those who seek and find how to serve. That's the same message that our Lord Jesus presents to us today. Our happiness, our meaning in life, is not to be found in consumption and self-promotion, but in loving service to the least of these, our brothers and sisters in need.